10 minutes later, one of the guys calls me on the radio and says, uh, they got to the hospital, he's got a heartbeat. Mine almost stopped. I do not know you, but I am your brother. You do not know me, but I am your protector. I will run into a burning building to save your life. Though I do not know your name, I will take a bullet for you. Though we've never met. I, I believe, believe in duty, duty and sacrifice, sacrifice of self. self. Your, your family, family is my family. Is my family. Your life is my duty. What's going on guys? Time for another episode of Behind the Uniforms. We are here on location at Sharpshooter USA in Roswell, Georgia. This gentleman joining us on the show, the way that this works for those of you who have never seen it before is our guests are uh, active, retired, veterans, police, firefighters, any first responders, and they share with us two stories. A story about a good day, a story about a bad day, and it helps to really humanize the men and women behind the uniform. So we ask that you guys all help us share this. So without further ado, tell me who you are. Hi, my name is Donald Moss. I'm a retired uh, now law enforcement officer from an agency in Metropolitan Atlanta. Been retired five years, had 37 on the job before I retired, so enjoying you, life. You're a father and a grandfather? A father. And a grandfather. Excellent. A husband. Excellent. Yeah. So tell me, uh, where do you want to start? High or low? Good day or uh, bad day? Start low. End, okay. on high, end on a high note. Excellent. Um, I, I asked for it's okay to do another kid story, but I, I think that uh, the cops remember kid stuff because we got, I think we have a tender spot for, for kids and we remember stories with this. So, so I'll start low. Uh, back, all the way back in 1984, shows how long I've been, been on the job, but uh, which a call that started with a missing a uh, child, a uh, boy about 11 years old that was missing from an apartment complex. So uh, we spent a, a Sunday afternoon looking for what we thought was a, a missing child, a lost child in the woods and stuff. No luck on Sunday. We spent a whole day on Monday looking for a, a child you know, that we thought was wandering in the woods lost. And by Tuesday, um, the focus had changed a little bit because you know, we haven't had to find this child. So we're doing, doing a search of an area close to where he, where he lived, a section of woods. And I came upon a, a place that just looked disturbed in the in the uh, in the woods there, and uh, rolled over a uh, a log that was there and brushed back a pile of leaves. And when I did, I uncovered his leg from his knee to to his hip. Oh, no. uh, and found where he you know he, turned out he'd been murdered, and uh, and his body had been been hidden there within a hundred yards of where actually where his parents lived, oh, uh, where where he lived. Uh, so uh, so yeah, a hard a hard day. Uh, were you guys able yeah, to catch who did it? Uh, they figured out who did it at a, at a later point. Um, I, I don't think they, the guy was ever charged. He was, in, he was actually in prison for another similar case, a kidnapping where the child actually got away. Uh, and he went, went to prison for that. But there was you know, a lot of years transpired in, in, the, time, in the time there. So uh, you know, it's hard sometimes when you know, there's old cases to go back and make them. But, uh, but they did finally figure out who did it, I think, so. Do you go home after a day like that and kiss your kids a little bit extra, hug them a little tighter? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I think we compartmentalize, you know, you, you, you get ready to, to, to leave and, you know, it, go, it goes into the work file. Uh, and, uh, there, I read a book several years ago, this guy was a detective in Knox County, Tennessee, and he wrote, wrote this book, and, and in the book he talks about ghosts. And, uh, and, and being able to close your eyes and see bodies and people from your, from your past. And when I read it to start with, I thought, well, that's me. You know, I, I, I can do that. But then I, I realized that, that if I can close my eyes and I can bring them up and I can see them and I can remember them, then they're not going to jump out on me in the middle of the night when I'm sure. not expecting them. You know, so it's, it's not ghosts that haunt you. It's memories, things that you remember, uh, but it's, it's not things that, you know, jump out in the middle of the night and scare you, you know, that you, that you got to deal with. So, so I, I think that's it. You just you compartmentalize it and you... So tell me about a good day. Uh, great day. A, a, a kid story again. 25 years later, uh, work, work in the evening shift, and, uh, and we get a call on a missing child in a subdivision. Uh, this kid's like two years old, and uh, he was out in the backyard with his family, and just they turned around and he was gone. And if you, you know, some of you got kids, you know, that can, you know how fast that can happen. So we're searching the house, we're searching the yard, we're searching everything every, everywhere around and, and, we, and we don't find this child. So a good 45 minutes or so from the initial disappearance goes by and his father finds him in the neighbor's koi pond, uh, submerged in the, in the koi pond. Oh my God. And uh, grabs him out and, you know, and comes running into the, yard, into the yard screaming. So it just happens, there's a neighbor there who's a doctor 
and uh, and I were there. So we and we did this child, and, and I think we exchanged this look that you know first responders understand when you go with something like that. You know, uh, there's probably nothing we can do here, but it's, but his parents are standing right here. You know, you can't you can't do nothing. So so we put this child on the ground and started CPR. Called for the rescue squad to, to get there. So we, you know, we're going through, you know, what I think in my mind at least, you know, was emotions uh, th for the CPR. But the rescue squad shows up, the ambulance shows up, they take over the CPR, they take off to the to the hospital. We go about gathering our information, you know. Ten minutes later, one of the guys calls me on the radio. He says, uh, they got to the hospital, he's got a heartbeat. Mine almost stopped, you know. But uh I mean, that's like, you know, all this weight just disappears, you know, sure. from, uh, from anything. So uh, it's not, not often you get really, really happy endings. And he survived. Wow. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a good day. Yeah, that was a good story. Happy that's awesome. Ended. Yeah. <clears throat> what, do you, uh, what do you wish more people would know about cops? Uh, there were people. Um, you know, I, I think people see the uniform and that's, you know, and they, they don't realize that there's, you know, a husband, a wife, a father, uh, you know, a son, a daughter that's, you know, that, that put that, that they're, they're people from their community. You know, it's, it's funny, they see us at parties or out at a social gathering and, you know, everybody wants to t hear the cop stories. You know, everybody wants to listen, talk to the cop. I used to, you know, I'd tell my new guys who are coming in, you know, so you go to a party and there's you and a used car salesman. You know, <laughs> nobody wants to hear, the, you know, the story about the, you know, the 17-year-old the car that somebody sold today. Yep. You know, they want to hear, you know, the cop stories. And it's yeah. just, so, you know, in that setting, everything's great. And then you put that uniform on and they see you out in the, you know, in the world. And it's just, it's, it's a whole different, you know, they, they, they see you so much different. Is that they would see that same person that they see, you know, outside the uniform. They'd see that same person when, uh, when they deal with us on the street, when they, you know, when they run into us. That, awesome. Uh, Awesome. Well, that's the goal of the series. Guys, we ask you to just take the two seconds to hit the damn share button, share these stories with all of your friends. Uh, let's just help us show that these are the men and women who are your neighbors, your brothers, your sisters, your husbands, your wives, um, just like you and I. So, brother, thank you so much thank for you. being on the show. Thanks for sharing this video. God bless America.